thank you this morning for this opportunity and privilege to come and to share the word of God with your people. We thank you, Father, for the spirit of God being here who will give us insight and revelation of your word. Mm -hmm. And that, Father, we purpose that we'll not simply be hearers, but we will be doers of the word that we hear. And even as we look upon the topic of rest, well, we thank you today that there is a rest for your people, Father God, that when the society and the things around are swirling, mm -hmm. the Lord, in the midst of it all, we can be at rest in you. Yes. And so we just praise you today for the opportunity to receive your word and to only to, to be doers of that word that we receive on the day. We declare, Father, that we love you, we thank you, and we just give you glory. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 So we have been sharing with you on walking in the rest of the Lord. And the main verse we've been using uh, is Psalms 37, 7. And it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's so easy today. The word fret means to blaze with anger and jealousy. It's so easy today to be jealous. I mean, when people stand up and say, you know, they're for you, but they, their, their total income... Their net worth is thirty, you know, thirty million dollars, you know. But they relate to you, the poor guy, you know. I'm like, well, <laughs> probably not, you know. You know, they probably don't really relate to you that much, you know. But, 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 you know, it's easy to get in that point where you kind of get jealous of that. And, but, but God called us His people <coughs> to rest. Amen. And so, as we were talking about oh, what does it mean to rest, and 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 in, in one of the definitions, it said it means to be done. <laughs> And, and we kind of broke that down, what it means, not necessarily saying, it's simply saying that when we're resting in God, we don't have to know everything because we can trust in the Lord with all our hearts and we don't have to lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we acknowledge Him and He directs our path. Amen. That's what it means to be dumb. In other words, we, we, I gave the analogy of the chairs. I said, I asked a question when I put these chairs together. Uh, when you came and sat down on these chairs, did you hesitate? You're like, oh, I don't know if I can sit in this chair now. I don't you know, you didn't think about it, did you? You just sat down. Amen. Now, mind you, I put all these chairs together. I am not a builder. Okay, <laughs> that is not my skill set. Uh, but you trusted mm -hmm. that that chair would support you without thought, without hesitation. Right? Uh, no one said, hmm, I wonder if the pastor has any skills in doing this. I wonder if the pastor uh, put all the screws in. You didn't even think about it. It didn't cross your mind. Why? Because you just rested in the fact that the chair was there. Mm -hmm. That's how God wants us to live towards him. Well, we don't have to understand everything. You didn't, I mean, no one came to me and said, Pastor, now, how, now explain me how you put those shells together. Where did you put the screw? Did, did you strip any screws, you know, the, the screws in it? Did you, you know, no one asked. No one even thought about it. We, you just, tr people just trusted. And we sat down. Praise God. But you know, that's what God wants us to, he wants us, you know what God really wants? He wants us to be in a seated position in our hearts where we're resting, where we're just trusting. Well, we're not, we're, not, we're not running all about here and there trying to get everything done, but we're just resting. Now, I'm not saying physically we're sitting down, but spiritually we are sitting down because we're trusting Him. You know why we can sit? sit? Because Jesus is seated. Amen. And He is the head, come on, and we are the body. My head don't stand and my body sits. No, it doesn't work. If my head is sitting, my body's sitting as well. If he is seated, we are, we, are, we are resting from our own labor. And so when we talk about rest, I'm not talking about simply laying around, sleeping, lying on the couch. That's not what the Bible talks about when we talk about rest. Uh, a, better, a better understanding of rest really means that you cease from your own labor. Mm. You're not living for you anymore. For instance, right now, me standing here, I am in a state of rest. Amen. I am resting in the Lord. We say, well, you don't, you're, not, you're moving, you're back when you're talking, but I'm resting because I am doing that which the Lord has called me to do. Say that. Thus, I don't have to rely on my own ability. All right, man. I'm resting. You can go to your job and rest mm -hmm. if God gave you the job. Mm -hmm. You're not relying on your ability and your skill, just your skills alone, All right. but you're resting in the fact that God wants you there, and if he has you there, then he has a purpose for you being there. That's what it means to rest. I mean, I'm not doing what I want to do. I'm doing what he desires for me to do. I believe this is why so many people are tired today. So many people are stressed out today. So many people are worried today, even Christians, because they're not resting in the Lord. They're resting. They're trying to rest in their own intellect. We're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to find rest by the absence of problems. 
How I many you know in the, in the middle of the storm, Jesus was sleeping in the boat? It was filling up with water, but he was back in, in a deep sleep. But the ones who were not resting, who were not trusting, they said, Lord, care not that we perish. But Jesus had already told them we were going to the other side. Mm -hmm. See, his word is good. Yes, it doesn't mean there won't be storms along the way, but in the midst of the storms, like your Lord, if he's sleeping, and he is the Lord of lords, then guess what? While it's storming, you can sleep too. Mm -hmm. So many people worry, thinking that's an indication of love and care and concern. No, that's an indication that you don't, you're not resting in God. I've heard so many parents tell me about their kids. Like, oh, I'm worried about my kids. I'm worried about I love them so much. I'm so worried about them. No, no, hold up. If you love them, rest in the Lord. Because the, the Lord can be where you can. The Lord can go where you don't go. He never sleeps and he never slumps. He knows exactly where they are. So then why, why am I going to sit up all night if I'm really resting in the Lord? No, the Lord got them. As for me and my household, we shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, you don't know. It don't matter what they're into. Me, I was in some real dark places, some real dirt places. But guess what? In all those places, God showed up. Yes, he did. Come on, amen. He, he was always there. Always let me know he was there. Praise God. Yeah. But we've got to learn how to rest in him. Another, another meaning of the word rest, it means to, it means to hold your peace. You ever, you ever get mad at somebody and you just got to say what you got to say because you go say it? <laughs> That ain't rest. That's not rest. That's flesh. <laughs> Come on, amen. No, no. Sometimes, sometimes you need to hold your peace. Come on. Come on, amen. Why? So that the Lord can minister to you on how to minister to them. Sometimes, sometimes we, 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 can, we can do the most damage by, by talking too much. Just, just be, sometimes you just got to be quiet. Bite your own tongue. Just don't say nothing. I know you want to in the flesh, but you got to reel that flesh in and live in the spirit. And when you live in the spirit, praise God, you can rest in God. If God says, say I'm sorry, just oh, okay. You ever, had, you ever had God tell you to say you're sorry you know you didn't do nothing wrong? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And when your, thought, your first thought was, I ain't apologizing to me. I didn't do nothing wrong. <laughs> and God knows you didn't do nothing wrong. But see, God is a God of peace. Sometimes, listen, sometimes, listen, sometimes to help the other person, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost, to identify themselves as being wrong, somebody has to take the lead and say, I'm sorry, even though you may not be the one who's wrong. But it becomes a conviction to them and an opportunity for God to step in and show them, no, you know you was really wrong in that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that when you fight for the right, it just, the problem gets worse? Why? Because you're not resting in God. You're, you're trying to solve it in your own ability. Mm, yeah. See, sometimes what we're out to do is trying to win stuff. Mm -hmm. When we need to be singing, I surrender all. <laughs> Come on, amen. Right. See, winners don't surrender. But in God, surrenders, those who do surrender do win. Amen. See, didn't, didn't, didn't the Lord say, didn't our Lord say, our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ say, don't overcome evil with evil? But overcome evil with good. Amen. Didn't he say, bless your enemies? Amen. Didn't he say, do good to those who try to despitefully use you? Yes. You say, well, wait a minute. Why would God want me to do good to somebody who's trying to use me? Because if you and him, they can't use you because they can never get God, all of God's stuff. Sometimes God is gracious to people. But guess what? God isn't here physically, but he, you here representing him. All right now. See, all of us, as, I, I guess that all of us at some point probably had something or some things that we were doing that should have cost our death. Say that. But God was merciful. Say that. And kept us, come on, and established us. So you got to learn how to hold your peace. Another meaning of the word rest is, is it means quiet. You know, I meet people that say, I'm just loud. I'm just loud. I'm just, you, can't, you can't hear God like that. You can't rest in God being all loud all the time. You, anybody, anybody, anybody ever work with people that were loud, just loud. Everything they did was loud. I think they even ate loud. Just loud. Everything was loud. 
But you notice they were never at peace. You ever find that a lot of are never at peace? At rest? They loud. Why? Because confusion breeds confusion. I, and, and I really, now, the women y'all love me, but I hear from women a lot. I'm just loud. But the Bible says that you're supposed to have a quiet and meek spirit. Mm -hmm. Hold up now, you trying to take us back. You trying to take us back. We free. We free. <laughs> no, they got nothing to do with freedom. But you're really not free when you can't operate God's way. Come on. See, we see, we see quietness as a weakness. Mm -hmm. But Jesus spoke not a word in his own defense. Was he weak? Of course not. No, because three days later he won. <laughs> he got up with all power, come on, in heaven and in earth, in his hand. But he had to learn how to hold his peace. He had to, he had to rest in the plan of God. Sometimes we got to rest in the plan of God. And not on. What's the song to say? I was like, look at this. Did the, did, the, did, the, did the glory come in? Come quickly, Lord Jesus. It means this. Another word is silence. Listen, not only do you need to be, sometimes you need to be silent with your mouth, you need to learn how to be silent with your thoughts. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times our thoughts, even though we're quiet in the net, our thoughts are running like crazy. <laughs> we, everything we're not saying in the net, we're saying it in our minds. <laughs> Come on, amen. That's just as bad. Because the Bible says, so a man thinking. So he's easy. Have you, have you ever tried, have you ever had a day when you've been really busy at work and you wanted to come home and rest and you laid down but you couldn't even rest because even though you were laying down, you were still thinking about your job. Mm -hmm. Couldn't rest. You couldn't let it go. As though thinking about it was going to fix it. Mm -hmm. You're not resting. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said this in Ma Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. I want you to turn that with me. I'm going to give you four steps to walking in divine rest. Four steps. Four easy steps. Not even complicated. Thank you. Matthew chapter 11. And we'll look, at, we'll look at verse number 28 and 29. Now I'm reading this from a different translation, but I just kind of like the way that it read. Matthew 11, 28 says this. Come to me, all you who, who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Place my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me because I am gentle and humble. Then you will find rest for yourselves because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Don't that sound good? Ooh. It's just like, oh man, yeah, I need some of that. I need some of that. Man, I need some rest like that. So we'll give you four steps, four steps to walk in divine rest. Number one, we must come to Jesus. That's the first thing you got to do. This, this is an acknowledgement that we cannot find rest in ourselves or from surrounding circumstances. And isn't that what we do sometimes? We try to find it. We try to come up with a plan for rest. We come up with our ideals for rest. No, we're really supposed to come to Jesus. We're the first place you go to him. If I need a rest, if I need to turn my mind off, I got to go to the one who can help me turn my mind off. I got to go to Jesus. Amen. That's the first step. You've got to go to Jesus. The second step you must take is, is, is must, you, we must become tired of carrying heavy loads on our own. Some people think they can do it all. I can handle this one. I got this one. The Bible said that we're to cast all of our care upon the Lord. Why? Because he cares for us. Y'all going to be a funny fact. I, I see it now. <laughs> I'm going to make me laugh. <laughs> Y'all going to make me laugh. I'm going to be serious. I'm going to be serious. I'm going to be serious. But isn't that true? We must, we, we must become tired of carrying heavy loads on our own. You see, most times people don't get tired. They, they try to do it themselves. But the Bible tells us to cast all your... It doesn't say heavy ones or bad ones or medium ones. It says cast all your... Anything that concerns you. He said, you're to bring it to me. That sounds pretty good, don't you? I mean, but if you were carrying, if you were carrying a, a big old load of books on your back and you were being weighed down, I came on and said, "Hey, I look, I'll carry that for you." No, I got it. Knees buckling. Come on, amen. Been all over. 
Talking about your back hurt. Everybody you pay my back hurt. I'm sad. I can't. I'll help you. That's I got it. No, you don't. It, no, no, you don't. It got you. You don't have it. it it's got you. See, listen, you say, well, how, what do you mean by that? Whenever you can't let someone else help you, that thing is controlling you and you are not controlling it. You got to get tired of carrying your loads. He didn't, he didn't call you. Listen, he called you to obedience. So then however he says you carry it, you let him do it. You say, well, if I let him do it, people will think I don't care. You're not supposed to care. That's why he says, catch your care. <laughs> you don't care. I sure don't. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care what they feel about me. I don't care what they say about me. You know why? Because I'm serving him. That's why, listen, I didn't, listen, did we come to Jesus just so we can keep living for ourselves? Or did we come to Jesus because we had this specific problem we wanted him to fix, and then once we got that fixed, we went back to carrying other stuff? You're not going to rest. You're not going to know how to rest like that. So number one, we must, we must come to Jesus. Number two, we must become tired of carrying heavy loads on our own, which means when you come to Jesus, you've got to be willing to give him your backpack. Don't come to Jesus and have a little talk with Jesus and just tell him all about your trouble, but I'll keep my backpack on <laughs> and I'll keep on groaning and groaning. <laughs> no, no. You don't come to Jesus with your burdens and then take your burdens and just tell him about them. No, he said, when you come to me with your burdens, put your burdens on me. I can deal with it. Come on. And I want you to know what God wants. God really wants you carefree. Amen. He wants you to be carefree. He said, you just don't say nothing bothers you. It don't, because it ain't mine to bother you. I've given it to the Lord. That crazy, that crazy cousin that get on your nerves, just give them to the Lord. That friend that didn't pay you back, just give them to the Lord. That rebellious child that won't do anything you say, you know they're out there doing all the wrong stuff they don't, give them to the Lord. Just give them to the Lord. Lord, you got them. In the meantime, I'm going to praise you all the way to the bank. Because bringing my care to you, is, I'm taking it to the bank to the indication that you got this. Amen. 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 And do that mean, does that mean they don't have to make a choice? No, they have to make a choice as not whether or not they want it, but they won't go die ignorant. They go, no. Come on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Number three, the third step to walking in divine rest, you must take on his yoke. We must be willing, listen, we must be willing to give ourselves to his yoke, or listen, or his will. His purpose. Listen, meaning how you handle situations of life, you must handle them the way he says do it. If he tells you to love your enemies, you got to walk in love. You might be gritting your teeth, but in the spirit, you know, I walk in the love of God in the name say of that. Jesus. Say you might have to say, I'm sorry to people you know did you wrong. You say, well, I wasn't wrong. I, I helped them. They didn't pay me back. And I got a right to be mad. That's why you're wrong. I'm not the point. That's why you're wrong. That's why you're wrong. I mean, seriously. Because, listen, anything that's not of love means faith cannot work. If faith is not working, that means everything you're doing is not pleasing to God. That's where you're wrong. Because you get out of love of God. Because anything that's not of love is sin. But, but it didn't pay me back. It, it ain't right. And it's not right for you to get angry at them for not paying you back a debt when you had a debt that you couldn't pay, but Jesus Say paid it for that. you. Say that. Say that. Go pay Jesus back then. <laughs> Say the pastor did that. Go pay Jesus back. You can't pay him back. You got too much mess to pay, that you. It's like the guy. Y'all remember, remember the story? The story, the parable of Jesus gave of a man who owed his king like billions of dollars. And then, you know, and the king moved with compassion. He said, if you, if you give me time, I'll pay you off. Dude, you work a lemonade stand. You ain't going to be able to pay that back. <laughs> but he goes, I'm going to pay it back. Just give me time. And the Lord forgave him. The king forgave him. Showed him compassion. Mm -hmm. But then he went out. That same man went out and found his, one of his brothers that owed him like $3. And had him thrown in jail. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then those who were watching said, I'm going to go tell the king on you. So he went and told the king, he, you know that man you forgave him like ten, a billion dollars debt, he died and to a dude in jail for three dollars. So the king called for him, hey, hold up, come on back here, bro. He said, I gave you, you, you wicked, so I said, I, he said, I forgave you of all that debt, but then you took your brother and threw him in jail for three dollars? He said, throw him in jail until he pay off. 
You know what he, you know, you know, you know, you know, when you're forgiven of a debt, what you then owe is not the money. It's the grace and forgiveness. Amen. You know what that you know what that man owed his brother? He owed him grace and mercy. Because see, the king can't say, I forgive you, and then expect you to pay me what I told you I forgave you for. That would be a double standard. But what he did owe his brother and brother was he owed him grace and mercy. Amen. I would have been forgiven real quick. I'm sorry, I forgive him. I'm sorry. <laughs> see, when, when you have that attitude, you can't enter into the rest of God. Listen, when, you, when, when, you, when you're walking in your own yoke, you look at life through the injustice of the society. He didn't, he didn't see the depth of compassion and grace that is extended. When you're resting in God, it allows you to see the grace and compassion that he has for you. Think about it for a minute. Why could, I mean, how could a man be forgiven of, of a billion dollars worth of debt, but then not extend grace and compassion to his brother who only owed him $5, 6 7 dollars? Why? Because he, he had not received the yoke of his Lord, which, which showed grace and compassion. You know, you know why a lot of us aren't very compassionate with people? Why we just gotta say what we gotta say? I'm gonna speak my mind and say what I gotta say. I hear, I hear a lot of, I hear famous people say this. I'm gonna go say what I can get it off of me. Sometimes you don't need to get everything off of you. Sometimes you need to put it on Jesus. Sometimes you don't need to speak to everybody. Amen. I mean, what if the Lord, if the Lord said the other stuff that you know, based on the stuff that we do, if He said the stuff that we say to people? Mercy. And I'm not talking about not being honest with people. You definitely need to be honest with people. But when it's fueled by anger and rage and just being mad, the spirit behind it is always wrong. You can be wrong. wrong. You can be right, but with the wrong spirit, makes it wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can be right, but with the wrong spirit. So you've got to make sure your spirit is right in this thing. See, when you, the only way your spirit can get right is if you take on his yoke. Because what is his yoke? Grace. Love, mercy, kindness, compassion, tenderness. Come on, amen. The Bible says that, that love believes the best of every person. You may not like the circumstance that they did, but believe that God has a plan for them still, because he does. But if everybody's always condemning you for all the stuff you do wrong, guess what? You wouldn't be sitting here today. Church would be empty if they came in and started telling everybody about they wrong. You're wrong. No, you need some grace. I need some grace, praise God. I need grace and boy as much as everybody. So you must take on his yoke. You, you have to find out what do you want me to listen. In every circumstance, you got to ask him this. Okay, how you feel? What do you want me to do? Or how do you want me to handle this? Before you just start talking. See, see, love is proactive, not reactive. When you're just a reactive person, they hit you, you hit back. Come here, John. Come on, John. Okay, we're going to play. We're going to show you what, what love is not, all right? We're going to show you what not resting in God is, all right? You get me. That's what flesh does, I think. That's what flesh does. And I guarantee you, neither one of us will find rest. You said. Come on, amen, isn't that true? Right. Neither one of us will find rest. We'll just walk away tired and angry and bruised and beat up. God wants us resting. Come on, let me give you another example. Let me show you what resting means. All right. All right, hit me on. I forgive you. You don't know what to do now. You don't know what to do. What do I do? What do I do? But see, the Bible says, that's what the Bible says, uh, that in this way, when you show love to your enemies, he said, in this way, you will heap fires of coals upon their head. Mm -hmm. He don't know what to do now. Like, I hit him and he didn't respond back. He didn't react the way I, I would have reacted. Come on. But see, the only way I can do that is if I'm resting in the Lord. Because if I'm not resting in the Lord, hit me. That's what's going to happen every time when I'm not resting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm going to respond the way I want to, the way I feel. Mm -hmm. That's flesh. Amen. We're not called to walk in the flesh. We're called to walk in the spirit. Aren't you glad I'm walking the spirit towards you, son? I do. <laughs> All right, so we must take on his yoke. Find out what his purpose is. Find out what his will is. 
Handle things the way he says handle them. Take the time, take 10 seconds and count and breathe and walk away and say, okay, Lord, I need you to show me how to handle this. Because you know what I want to do. I want to you know, you might need an hour. Some of them might need an hour because you might just vent for like 50, 59 minutes. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> but, but, but give him time to speak to your heart about what you, before you just have a, react, a reaction. And then the fourth thing you need to do to uh, walk in divine, divine rest, you must learn from Jesus. You must become a disciple of Christ. This is a lifelong process that cannot be rushed. Mm -hmm. We must patiently follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. I want you to hear this. The reason why, the reason why you want to be taught from, by Christ, and that don't mean you don't have a man of God teaching you, but that man of God, when he stands up and shares the word of God with you, he is to share that word out of the spirit and not out of human intellect. Amen. Well, this is my, my degree says this is the way I'm supposed to say it. No. Amen. You need somebody to know how to flow with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on, amen. So that he can, so that, that man, as he stands there, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, can give you insight. You say, man, you know, he's talking to me this morning. You ever had days like that when you go to church and like, man, he's talking to me. He all up in my house. He's been living in my house. Come on, like today, you're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is it? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of God. You don't need human intellect teaching you. You need the Holy Spirit teaching you. So and the reason why I say you need to be taught by Jesus is because there's a lot of stuff out there that's not Jesus. And you can't get advice from everybody. I don't care if they do go to church. I don't care if they preach it. You, you can't get advice from everybody. I heard people say, I'll hit you. I'll hit you. You hit me. Now, what the love of God at that? Come on, amen. That's, that ain't the love. Hold up, man. I'm supposed to be an example and I'm going to be hitting people. That's not the love of God. Amen. I'll block now. I'm going to block real good, but I'm going to be punching on nobody. See, that's flesh stuff. So you, you, you must learn from Jesus. Meaning, listen, you must have time in the Word of God and not just while you're at church. And, and, and let, me, let me clarify something. I'm not saying that when you go home, you've got to read the Bible for two hours, three hours, because people start bragging about how long they read the Bible and how long they pray. Now, you, one word from God can change your whole perspective. Yeah. But just have, a real, just, just have a real relationship whereby He can speak to you and you are open to receive from Him. Have you noticed that when you have a good relationship with friends that you've been friends with for a long time, you may not talk to them for maybe a, a week, but when you talk to them, it's like you've never been apart. Amen. It's like no time has passed. It's like you just, just, just you pick up right where you left off. That's how your relationship with God should be. Now, yes, should we talk with God? Yeah, we should talk with Him every day. But He's not going to always talk back the way you think He will. Say that. Amen. But He will talk back. But when He talks back, you've got to be sensitive to the ways in which He speaks. Because a lot of people aren't. Because, they, because somebody told them, that God was going to speak a certain way. You know, they, they, they hear a story about, you know, I was in my prayer car, and the Lord allowed a book to fall off the shelf and open up. And, they, and so they go home, look, and they pray, and they hitting the wall, hoping books fall off the shelf. <laughs> I, mean, I heard one person say, you know, they were sitting praying, and they wanted an answer from God, so they picked their Bible, and they threw it across the room, and hit the wall, opened up, they ran and read it, and it was the answer. So guess what? That Sunday, everybody went home, throwing Bibles at the wall, and everybody you know, getting crazy answers. Come on, amen. You, you can't do that. You've got to develop this intimacy, intimate relationship with God. You've got to pick up the word, listen, not just to read it, but to know him. Now, see, some people give themselves points because they read the Bible. How many you know that people, uh, uh, the, I, well, I ain't going to put you on something, but I'll say me. I know people who can quote the Bible back and forth, but every time trouble shows, they fall apart. Say just that. fall apart, but, but they, read, they know the Bible, they can quote it. Why? Because they, even though they know the Bible, they have yet to have rest in their life where they can trust God in what they read. Amen. You can, get a, listen, you can get, a, get a master's of divinity in the Bible and still worry about everything. Mm -hmm. No, tons of them that do that. Mm -hmm. Worry about everything. But they got degrees, and none and and of the degrees, but don't you trust in that? Amen. You know, you know, they're like there are people who do marriage counseling, but I wouldn't trust them to give counseling to my dog. But they got degrees in psychology, degrees and all this stuff. But but they they don't even know. It's crazy stuff they tell you to do. How many of you know if you rehearse a problem long enough, the problem comes back to the surface? 
That's what the Bible says, forgetting those things which I was. Mm -hmm. And reaching forth to those things which I was before. But when you go talk to somebody, you go, let's go, let's talk about all your bad stuff. And you spend, and spend five years talking about all your bad stuff. But you never get better. Now, I'm not saying there aren't times when you need, I always say this, you need to reflect on your past when you don't remember your past, but what happened in your past is affecting you in the now. There are things that I, I, I did or that I walked in that I couldn't understand why I was like that. So the Lord had to take me back to my past to help me remember it so that I could forget it. See, there, there are some action reactions you got. You don't even know why you ever act the way you do. You don't know people like that. They don't even know why they act the way they do. Well, those people, you've got to take them back to their past. And let's find out why you're acting. So that when we can find what, what the, the problem is, we can take that care and put it at the foot of Jesus and say never again. But just to rehearse your past all the time, that, that ain't good. I mean, that, that's not a good thing. People, here's what happened. Then people start giving them the, themselves an excuse for why they are the way they are. You meet people like that? Why I have a daddy? Why I have a mama? You know, you had to have my daddy and mama 30 years ago. You know what? At this point, you could learn something new, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. You could learn a whole lot of new way of living mm -hmm. since then. Mm -hmm. But see, these, the, that man, mindset would not allow you to enter into rest. God wants you resting. He wants you to be at peace. Come on, you cannot enjoy life if you're not resting. If you're so busy trying to do your thing and you're just... A, not about his business. You're not going to rest. You know why you feel good when you did it? Have you noticed why you feel good when you bless somebody? You know what? Don't you? You, you become lighter. You're like, praise God. You just feel good when you bless somebody else. Why? Because you are operating in God's standard for your life. That's why Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Because when you give, you give life away. But here's the good thing about when you give life away, God is obligated to pour more life back into you. Well, most people ain't giving that now. You know what happened to water if you don't let, if it just sits there in a the pot? It turns stale. It's stagnant. You know, it, it gets thick. What about water gets thick when it just sits there? That's why some folks can't give because they got all thick. Can't get nothing out of them. It is thick. And stagnant. And stanky. They say, but they don't not give out. See, God, when you rest in the Lord, He will absolutely push you to be a giver in some respect of your life. He will. Not necessarily money, but something. He, sometimes it will just be a kind word to somebody. Sometimes it will just be a smile. Amen. See, those, those, these are the ways we rest as believers. We rest through our obedience to God. And that's what I want to leave you with. If you want to rest today, rest in your obedience to God. And in your obedience to God, God will bless your life. Amen. Because that's when you're most like God, when you're being obedient. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the word this morning. And we just pray, Father, that you would continue to help us to find that place of rest in you. So that we can live our lives in a way that, that is pleasing to you. That we would no longer live unto ourselves that we would not bear our yoke, but that we would take upon your yoke and learn from you, Father God, because we know your yoke is easy and your burdens are light. We declare today, Father, that we love you, we thank you, and we give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God. So today...